ship NAP's most wanted human trafficker. And in Panorama this afternoon, focus is on matters arising from shift in governorship and state assembly elections to March 18. A very good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us on Panorama from the New Network Center of the NTA. I am Agatha Egwari Ojo. You're welcome. A quick reminder that you can follow this news live on our social media handles displayed on the screen. Now, March 11 every year is the day set aside as World Plumbing Day. The World Plumbing Community established the day in 2010 to create awareness on vital roles in promoting the link between good quality plumbing, health, environmental sustainability, and increasingly economic prosperity. Now fixture on the calendars of political and social institutions around the globe, the World Plumbing Day is to avail people from within and outside the plumbing community to come together to learn and share knowledge as well as build connections and find opportunities to improve the quality and access to fresh water and safe sanitation. Now, Minister for Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, has inspected a 54-kilometer road under construction along Kirfi Gombe Road. Maria Mubala reports that the project is expected to be com completed in 12 months. The 54-kilometer Alkalehi Kirfi Gombe Abdo Road is one of the federal government road projects approved by the Federal Executive Council for construction in the northeastern states of Adamawa, Yobe, Bauchi, and Gombe. Inspecting the project, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk says the road is instrumental to the present administration and when completed, it will open up more business opportunities as well as ease movements of goods and services. This project is among the four projects that were executed in Site engineer assures of completing the 54-kilometer Alkaleri Kirfi Yugombe Abba Road within the stipulated period of 12 months. In Bauchi, Maria Mubala, NTA News. This year's national head count is sacrosanct as to deliver as arrangements to deliver credible census data on course. Uh, this formed the major discuss uh, the handover of census equipments by the United Nations Population Fund to the National Population Commission in Abuja. Olusheye Adiago reports. But many people will also ask why are we not communicating broadly? We are waiting for the governor elections to be over. It's yeah. irrespective of the date, it's yeah. Yeah. It's it's the it's census that the date of the 2023. The 2023 census is coming 17 years after the last exercise of the International Population Commission, the agency driving the project has assured that the digitization of the aid count will make the process transparent and credible. These census planners are finalizing preparations and this is consolidated with the latest delivery of 16 model laptops of high performance configuration. I wish to assure that um, these laptops will be put to effective use towards the execution of the census agenda. It is my firm belief that the 2023 uh, post election survey will live up to its tagline by making the census count. That when we talk about the sustainable development goals, when we talk about leaving no one behind, the, the sheer size of Nigeria means that not only will Nigeria not deliver its own development plans if we do not deliver the census, it's, a, it's the foundational data set for good development. For the UNFPA in Nigeria, the agency is actively involved in the census programs and its processes, emphasizing that the equipment is to be used for the post remuneration survey, PS, an exercise that will validate the census outcome. In Abuja, Ulusheye Adiagbo, NC News. Edo State Police Command has arrested 
a five-man robbery syndicate which specializes in defrauding victims of their savings by promising to make them rich without human blood. The police public relations officer, SP Chidi Wabuzo, disclosed this while briefing journalists at the state command's headquarters. Jude Abugu has details. The suspects, the PPRO explained, are members of the fourth man gang that Lord Wen Shitu has in, all the way from Yenagua to Egara in Edo State through Facebook, but attacked and dispossessed him of his ATM card and pin when he arrived in Egara. Some group of boys open an account on Facebook using the social media, claiming to be native doctors, that they can make people rich without involving any means of blood covenant, blood rituals. The PPRO further stated that one of the suspects was intercepted along Egara Ibile Road while going to withdraw money from the victim's account. Others, he said, were arrested in Auchi on Wednesday. Similarly, the same gang members was able to reach one Sunday through the Facebook email and the publication advertisement that they will make him rich without blood ritual. He actually became interested and moved all the way from Podako to River State down to Igala in Edo State. He was equally received, taken to the forest, and they used cutlass on him. The command is assuring the people of the state of its commitment to ridding the state of crimes and criminality. In the name, Jude Abugu, NTA News. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, in collaboration with the Department of State Services, Federal Ministry of Justice and the Italian authorities, has successfully extradited one, it, one of Italy's most wanted criminals, Charity Omowi, also known as Jeff Joy. A statement by the agency's press officer, Vincent Adekoye, revealed that a judgment delivered by the Court of Appeal in Italy in June 2022 convicted and sentenced Omowi to 13 years imprisonment in abstentia for human trafficking, exploitation for prostitution, slavery, as well as aiding and abetting illegal migration. Omowi, a 54-year-old Nigerian from Edo State, fled, the ni fled to Nigeria when a warrant for her arrest was issued and she was put on Interpol red notice. Omowi's extradition to Italy on the 8th of March 2023 after her arraignment before Honorable Justice Binta Yaku was facilitated by Article 12 of the extradition treaty between the government of Italy and Nigeria signed in Rome in November 2016. Director General of NAPTI, Professor Fatima Waziri Azi, who expressed satisfaction with the process that led to the arrest and eventual extradition of the traffickers said the agency will continue to partner with all concerned in the fight against human trafficking in Nigeria and other parts of the world. Now, stakeholders are calling for increased commitment to build capacity and promote active participation of women at the judiciary level to achieve equality. Now, this is as the world celebrates female judges who they say are in the forefront in the fight against social injustice. In most cases, they are first wives, mothers, and then judges, combining three different cumbersome roles, but still create a balance as they mount the courts administering justice for a fair society. In Edo State, 17 women, though quietly, are making a mark in this area, contributing to the growth of society. They are seen as fearless, handing down sound judgments. We have more female judges. The female judges, they are wonderful. Most, uh, if in short, all the uh, matters are accelerated and also, you know, they look at it with the eyes of the law, the eyes of compassion and, you know, and their dominion, when, whenever they are handling their matters, you'll be very, very pleased with them. I've been to several courts where I go to give electronic evidence where women are the judges, many occasions. and. Most times when I just enter the door, they just like, 
Ah, no. Mr. Journalist, can you please take your seat with heavy cursing? Gladys is a young lawyer practicing for a little above a year now. She looks forward to the day she will also take on not just the title, but full responsibilities of Honorable Justice. One of the things I have noticed about them is they are very effective. They try to be attentive, no reasons to prolong most of the matters. And most of them, in giving their um, judgments, they try to weigh both sides. As they mark the day, these Nigerians want them to sustain fight against child abuse, domestic violence and gender-based discriminations in whatever form. I want them to continue to have that boldness, that courage, that they can do it and they would continue to do it. This year, with the campaign Women in Justice, Women for Justice, is the United Nations way of celebrating progress made by these women whose presence in the judiciary enhances women's role in decision making. Panorama continues after this break. Stay with us. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. I believe we have fought one civil war too many in this country. So those who experience it will run away from it. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Thank you for staying on. The rescheduling of governorship and state assembly elections to enable INEC reconfigure beavers for the elections has thrown up new debates on the reliability, acceptability, and the essence of beavers reconfiguration. Uh, some uh, analysts in Edo State spoke on this and other matters arising from the rescheduling of the elections. Judah Bugu, our reports. The rescheduling of the election, as explained by INEC in a press release, was to enable it to have ample time to reconfigure the beavers in all the 774 local government areas of the country. This became imperative since the appeal court's judgment granting its request on beavers configuration came barely two days to the initial date for governorship and state assembly elections. While hoping that this will not affect data crucial to presidential election litigations, some Nigerians are, however, not convinced that the beaver's machines need to be configured before they can be used for the governorship and state assembly elections. The beaver's machine is a very technical object, and the primary uh, custodian of it is the INEC, and the people who are going to do the re reconfiguring is the INEC. Now, who is guaranteeing the expert technical persons that will be with INEC that will be transparent, that can be trusted by Nigerians to be people who will not tamper with the data in the machine. Others are, however, of the view that the Commission is acting in good faith and within its constitutional powers. If I next so deserve, so wish, I will sort the original from court and choose to go on to say, oh, they want to go and make, they want to reconfigure beavers to meet up their expectation to meet up what they so wish for. It is the duty of INEC to go ahead and do what they have to do. People should come to equity with clean hands. They should not be uh, parochial, sentimental, or preemptive into any action. The rescheduling of the elections has equally extended the campaign period for candidates contesting for governorship and state assembly positions. We have already geared our minds towards voting by Saturday. This means we'll have to reschedule whatever program of events that we have lined up for this weekend. As I are expecting that INEC will also use the one-week extension to address glitches and other setbacks suffered during the presidential and national assembly polls. In Benin, Jude Abugu, NTA News. 
uh, to discuss more on issues uh, or matters arising uh, leading to the rescheduled governorship and assembly elections is a legal practitioner and public affairs analyst, uh, Greg Iyai. Good afternoon, sir. Thank Good you for joining us on Panorama. Time. Good afternoon, viewers. All right. Uh, now, missed feelings have continued to trail the postponement of governorship and uh, state assembly elections. Uh, what's your reaction to the shift in date to March 18? Well, the shift in date is within the ambit of the law. So there is nothing outside the law uh, concerning it. But our concern is that the enthusiasm of people uh, will it be sustained uh, up to that day? And then also, people are beginning to wonder whether INEC will actually take advantage of the shifting dates to correct some of the anomalies that we witnessed. Logistics problem, people not arriving on time, then some parties, names and logos being missing on the ballots, uh, papers. So these are things that people are worried about, that will they, will they use this opportunity to actually address these issues that threw themselves up and cast some clouds on the last election, the presidential election. So that is the area of worry in mm -hmm. it. Um, so but what do you think uh, INEC can do to you know, erase these issues of doubt you know, that have been raised up now because of these issues of beavers and then uh, shifting the governorship elections and assembly elections too. You see, like we've always said, trust is end. Nobody dashes you trust. It's never given no don't pack to. You end the trust of the people. There's a trust deficit between INEC and Nigerians. And I'm afraid, really afraid, that INEC has to do extra work to restore the trust of the Nigerians. And we are talking about beavers. You know, much money was expended on the beavers. Mm -hmm. The design was by a Nigerian, it's, it's, a Nigerian um, um, it's Nigerian technology to our credits. And are you going to use the beavers the way you are telling Nigerians you will use it? Nigerians are not after excuses because there were excuses, there were problems, there were technical problems. But if there were technical problems, all right. But were those problems not human? If those problems are human, Nigerians will find it very, very difficult, you know, to believe that the issue of configuration and who is going to be an umpire there to ensure that the configuration is going to be free, fair, to all the candidates. So these are the issues that have come up. That it was not just a, techno a technical problem, but it was possibly a human problem. The human interference in it is what Nigerians are worried about. So we, people were ready to give airtime, you know, power generators and all that, if it was just a technical problem. But INEC has to work extra hard, you know, to convince Nigerians that they are actually an umpire. And as an umpire, they have no vested interest in the outcome of the election, mm -hmm. but only in the transparency of the process. Okay, earlier you talked about in sustaining enthusiasm of the people, uh, you know, before March 18. Uh, but this is an election that is uh, way, way much, will I say, closer to the people. This election to me, the presidential election is very important, but this is to me even more important to Nigeria because let's look at it. The governors are nearer us than the president. Yeah. And then the House of Assembly members are also nearer us than the National Assembly members. You see, every politics, like people always say, is local. And this is local politics. And we are all involved in it because we all live in an area. That area is going to have representatives. We all live in the state. We are Nigerians, but we come from states. And the governors are there. They are like our little president. I think this is why I appeal 
to every Nigerian to make sure that they come out and vote massively. Even those who didn't come out in the presidential election, come out because the National Assembly, the State Assembly members are going to make laws that will regulate the school our children go to, our hospitals, our marketplaces, yeah, even our places of worship. So the things that touch us fundamentally, directly. So that is why we should be very concerned about the people that go to the state assemblies. Because they will make laws that directly impact on our day-to-day -day living. So we shouldn't look at it as a joking issue. It's an issue that all of us should be interested in. Because if we don't vote mm -hmm. and the wrong people go there, then we cannot be seen or heard to be complaining. So let us go out and be part of the process. I know that there is a lot of discouragement, but let us go, like we did in the presidential election, and even more. And I would like to say to the youths, mm -hmm. you went out. You, we, people said you don't have PVC. You proved that you have PVC. People said on that day you'd be going to play football. You didn't play football that day. People said you were going to be violent. You conducted yourself very impressively. A plus for us. You just go out and vote. Women go out and vote. Men, old men, old women, let us go out and vote. Because whether we like it or not, if the people we do not vote for, you know, make laws, whether we like it or not, they will affect us. Okay, so as we look forward to uh, March 18, uh, what are your expectations? My expectation is that the election will be better, much better than we saw in the presidential election. Mm -hmm. And that the outcome, with the appeal and we are making, that the outcome will be far, far more impressive. All right. Thank you so much, Barista Gregory, yeah, for your time on, Meet, on Panorama. Thank, Thank you, you so Agatha. much. All right, moving on now. Amidst the uncertainty in cash transactions, business owners in Ado, the Akiti State Capital, have appealed to the Central Bank of Nigeria, that's the CBN, to give clear court directives to commercial banks in the issuance of old Naira notes in view of the recent judgment of the Supreme Court. Olukemi Sani reports visited major centers of commerce in the town and reports that many are still rejecting the old Naira notes. Welcome to Ojoba Market, the commercial now center of Adwekiti, the Ekiti state capital. Huge buying and selling of various commodities and items. But we wonder which of the currencies are acceptable here. The hold or the new Naira notes. The people should announce it. Make it known to everybody that this Naira should be spendable. Yeah, because we have the money, so that we don't have the yeah, so everybody are not collecting it. Please look at it. As we get some traders that are not accepting the hold currencies, Kenneth here who sells cosmetics accepts both old and new currency. Why do you accept the hold currency? I accept it because of there is no markets and it, there is no cash on town and to control it transfer if they want to do transfer network is no okay instead of hungry to kill us so accept it because of there's no cash Ariola Oloroje is a popular trader in Ojaoba markets she accepts only the new naira notes it's only new Nero note that they accept in bank the old notes we took it to bank yesterday they didn't accept it i have here Peter, who is ready to collect both the hold and the new Naira notes? Uh, the news told me that I should be collecting it. That's why I decided to collect the money. Same old job market where Peter collects both the hold and the new Naira notes. Felix Ineji, who says second-hand clothing, says he doesn't collect the hold Naira notes. If I collect it and if I take it to the bank, the bank will not welcome it. They will not collect it. That is just what we are suffering now. Even the queue in the bar will not even give you access to enter. What is the implication of the current situation where two currencies are legal tender, but at the same time, Nigerians are not sure which to collect? Central Bank, I mean, Supreme Court has made the pronouncement. The president has not said anything specific. No pronouncement from the Central Bank. That's why people are confused. So let's wait till that particular monetary policy committee we meet. And then Central Bank will now table the pronouncement of Supreme Court before their board. 
So by that time, maybe they are going to comply. And then now, everybody will know that this currency remains a legal tender. One thing is certain in all job markets. Both the old and new notes are acceptable depending on which store you have and which commodities you are buying in Adwekiti or Lukemi Sony NTA News. Thank you, Lukemi. And time now to join our sports desk for the latest in the world of sports. We begin with football after a podium finish of third place against Tunisia at the 2023 Under-20 African Nations Cup in Egypt on Friday. The Nigerian Under-20 head coach,